So I was thinking I'd give you all um, some pieces of paper and pencil and I've got some clipboards and just uh, we would take some time, I don't know, 20, 20 minutes or so. We'll see if that, I don't know, we'll see if it feels too long or too short. And um, just spend some time looking at the, the, the barnacles and all the, all, the, all the creatures and beings around here. And um, you can write or you can draw, you, or you don't have to write. Um, and, and consider, like, we often look at, we often approach the world visually, but, um, you can consider the other ways we might perceive, perceive these entities, um, touch, smell, taste. People do eat barnacles, or did eat barnacles, even the, um, the acorn barnacle, and I still haven't figured out um, exactly how, but I think they might have been skiing. And then um, you can write about that, or you could write about how, think about how the, barna how the barnacle perceives the world, and how it might perceive us and how, how other, other, um, other beings in this, in this zone, the intertidal zone, um, experience the world. And then I guess we can come back and talk about it. Sounds good. The barnacles look inanimate at first glance and at low tide, like stones glued to a surface. Even knowing they are a sea creature, I had to wrap my head around the idea of them as animals, which is a word usually reserved for creatures with legs or wings or some sort of visible movement. Crouching at the water's edge, I can see the barnacles attached to a fallen tree. The water moves around them, drawn by the tide and rippled by the wind, and the log gently rocks up and down with the water's movement. I can see under the water the movement of the dusty looking barnacle arms waving up and down. This, this also must create a current, another movement alongside the tide and breeze and bobbing log. All of this interconnected movement, each interacting and affecting the others. What is the ripple effect of a waving barnacle arm? There is the interconnectedness, interconnections of the movement and there are the interconnections of all the visible parts. The tree was once growing in the land, providing habitat and food and life for all of the creatures around. Now the fallen, now fallen and waterlogged, it continues to provide the same for the creatures of the sea. And all this interconnecting, interconnectivity are humans. What do we provide for the barnacles? That wasn't so much about the barnacles' mm -hmm. experience of life, except for if you think about the ripple effect of a barnacle arm. You know, I was thinking, I was like, I was thinking about how barnacles experience and like as part of my research on barnacles I was looking at like their senses and I was thinking well that's one way to consider it but you could also like consider I don't know the things they experience everything around them that affects them and they affect well when I was thinking about the barnacle arms in that movement I was thinking about like like their you know, they when you watch them, they don't move in unison, but they obviously, like, as a group, must... Well, the movement is feeding off each other. Yeah, it must feed off each other, so it's like, it's like a social grouping of barnacles that you probably don't understand at all. <laughs> I you could just talk about, about um, uh, like... I guess barnacle feelings and oh, I want to hear that. <laughs> and um, if they have ancestral memories, 
And do you think I should read it or should mm -hmm. I just if tell you're, you? If you're comfortable. Okay, I'll read it. What was my first thought when you think about sentience outside of humans is what do they think or feel about about what we are doing to the earth? Are they afraid? Will they ever forgive us? Are other beings able to hold on to the sort of ancestral knowledge, like the goats who just know what to do with their babies? Do the rocks hold knowledge of glaciers or the fire be beginnings? What about what do barnacles think about? Is it merely their own continuation or is it about the continuation of their line or family? Maybe in a way it's the same thing. We are, we are because we have, uh, we have been brought here by those before us and we create out of the natural rhythm of continuation. Humans are such thinking creatures. So in their heads, possibly cerebral, we think about, we think that our knowledge and what we, what we make or create with our hands is the strongest or most powerful. But even as it supports us, I think we are almost afraid of our instinctual knowledge. Can we trust that, we seem to say? Maybe that is where more of the knowledge comes from. Other creatures, feeling instead of thinking, will never know another experience, but all that they carry must come from somewhere. Perhaps there is something greater, some sometimes greater wisdom in that. What about the water moving? What about the wind? Is this how we don't, is this how we don't feel lonely? Would it help if we see ourselves as something, as one of many, of little and big ones around us, like a living ocean instead of candles into the dark night? But then how do we let our hearts rest when the idea of all the motion, this motion around us? We are just one of many who had a hand in shaping this bay. Maybe we were just trying to do our part. And then I wrote some notes on the Monocle Budge at this. That was lovely. Everyone's so poetic. <laughs> I have just a few words. <clears throat> um, Watertight doors on land and in water. Amphibious, like a volcano around a beak, like an eye with lid, hiding the reclusive creature. Cohabitating with others, including muscles. Strength in numbers. The shell looks fibrous like wood. Mm. That's almost a haiku. Yeah, that like sounds like one of the haikus. <laughs> well, you could read you what I wrote. Yeah. I said, you could look at it the scientific way. Their larval compound eyes shadow sensing as adults, the touch of their siri, and sensing of chemicals in the water. Or you could consider the things around them, the rock or the pier or boat, the water, the film of microorganisms growing over everything in the water, growing in the water. Do we taste like plastic and creosote and the copper of toxic ship paint? Sea cucumber, here's some, then there's some notes on like things I see. Sea cucumber, cucumber leans brown into the water. The tide is up to the madrona tree's root. A dead or dying jellyfish comes, has come to bump shoulders with a rusted cable. The wind swishes occasionally. The water is very quiet. Small birds chirp from the trees and a seal gurbles, ducks. There is cool sun in a minute, light ripples gray and blue and green and white on the water. Far away cars, airplane. Air smells fresh, just stopped rain. The cover tide covering mud flats. Can barnacles taste mud in the water? Car runoff from the bridge? I wonder if mud tastes good to barnacles. Well, no, I feel like <clears throat> after a heavy rain, a lot of mud must like, like, Land come mud come, must come into the water, and that might make it different. Yeah. But who knows? I think we have an opportunity to go. Um, Wander off? Yeah.